Thank you, Mrs. Lily Ebbett, for those incredibly moving words. One of the most moving things I get to do in my work for Tribe is to accompany the future of our communities. I know the tagline of this project is remembering the past to build the future. And I get the opportunity to accompany the youngsters of our community on heritage trips to Poland where we get to visit the sites of the Holocaust. And I'd like to invite Sophia Breslauer and Barnaby Graf to share with us some highlights of their recent trip to Poland. Last year, I had the life-changing experience of participating in the Tribe Learn to Lead Poland program. Our trip to Poland was not only about remembering the past, but also a key step in educating all of us about our Jewish heritage. Only by visiting places of horror such as Majdanek, Plashov and Auschwitz can we, as the future of the Jewish population, come close to comprehending the events that took place 70 years ago. I returned from the trip not sad, nor scared for what the future holds, but proud to be able to hold my head high and walk through these camps with other young Jewish people just like me. These sites are history that we will never forget, but we, in this room are the present, and we will continue to survive. Some of the highlights of the trip were when, between the tears and solemn moments, we danced and sang together as a group. In just five days, people who had never met before formed new friendships, and others strengthened old ones reaffirming the community values which for me makes Judaism so special. We also were lucky enough to meet one of the righteous amongst the nations who told us her courageous story of saving a young Jewish girl from the Germans in Warsaw. This was particularly moving as we as a generation are able to learn from Holocaust survivors personally about the events of the Second World War. However, for our children and for our grandchildren, this will not be possible. We must continue to keep their stories alive and remember them as much as, those, as the stories of those who perish. Poland is a country full of Jewish heritage, which is just beginning to rediscover its roots. I hope that every Jew is able to visit Poland and that their trip is as, in, as enlightening as mine was. Tribe Poland was an emotional experience for me and a key part of forming my Jewish identity. Spending those five days amongst such an amazing group of Jewish people inspired me to continue to build my own Jewish future and I will remember the special experience I had for the rest of my life. This summer, when visiting Yad Vashem in Israel, I noticed a particularly striking photo, which showed a Jewish store which had been completely destroyed on Kristallnacht. It is sometimes hard to identify with the fear people felt at that time. We try to believe and hope that the world has learnt and with the state of Israel we are safe. But only then could I feel or try and feel that fear. The picture reminded me of one I had seen only a day before in an article. Like this picture from 1938, the store was smashed and destroyed. Only this picture was taken in Paris in 2014. The reality of the Holocaust affected me the most in that moment than ever before. It made my trip to Poland with Tribe mean even more to me than just a simple trip. I wanted to go and see where our people lived and learn what our people experienced and feel the cold they felt. One moment that was powerful to me is when we visited Majdanek. We were shown a room full of shoes, a long building just lined with tens of thousands of shoes, and asked to focus on only one. I chose a woman's shoe. It was a pair of heel sandals and you could still see the yellow strap, the yellow colour of them on the middle strap. It was a very powerful experience as only then 
I fully understood how unprepared and unknowing people were. To come to a cold, torturous camp wearing heel sandals really shows for me how shocked and terrified people must have been once on arrival. The fact that you could still see the colour shining through brought some life to the dark and battered shoes. Personally, in the past, I have felt somewhat removed from the extent of the Holocaust. Seeing black and white images can make it seem unrelatable to the modern world we live in. But the colour still being there really affected me and connected me to what people experienced. Beforehand, I expected every day to be more emotional than the next. I expected to cry more than I'd ever before, and I expected to feel somewhat unsafe in such a cold and harsh town. But I was wrong. Every concentration camp we went to, we met groups of Israeli teenagers whose immense spirit filled the cold atmosphere. We joined them, singing proudly while waving Israeli flags high above us. This to me was really powerful, and I never really considered I would feel uplifted. But in that moment, the fear I felt had immediately gone. We were standing with Israeli flags on our backs as Jewish people in a place where they tried to exterminate us. Look where we are now, I thought. It is not what the Nazis have done, but what we have done since. The loss of freedom of religion, freedom of belief, and freedom of speech is important to our world. And now more than ever, we must be vigilant and sensitive to people who look to take our basic freedoms away and threaten our existence. While 70 years have passed, the lesson of the Holocaust, brought closer to focus by my tribe trip, is that we must never forget. As an expression on Auschwitz Museum all said, the one who does not remember history is bound to live through it again. <laughs>